Justin is in town tonight. You're playing the Showbox. You are at the uh, the end of a long tour. Yeah, it's been a, a, a well several several tours linking up uh, a, an East Coast American tour with a European tour in the middle, and then a West Coast tour. And so yeah, it's been a it's I'm 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 done. <laughs> when you go back home after you've been out for that long. Are you able to turn off the part of your brain that's thinking about music and writing music? Does that feel like work to you still? No. I mean, I, I, I've always been kind of a cocktail napkin writer, so it's never really felt like work. I kind of, it's always something I've kind of done randomly. There, I don't set times to sit down and write. I think it, I find those, t those turn out disappointing more often than not. And, uh, yeah, so it, 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 but it is hard to kind of adjust to, uh, like, no, no schedule. You know, it's a you, you get used to having a day sheet that tells you where and when to be everywhere, and and things happen. They seem exciting, but they're probably not as exciting as they seem. Wait, but in real life or on the tour? On tour, and uh, and then when you get but home, you're not talking about this. This is obviously thrilling. Ob obviously, you yeah. Can't you know? <laughs> contain yourself, right? Yeah, no, it's but yeah, it, it does. It just becomes the the road is a is a series of uh, it's like you you do a the same thing repeatedly. Uh, over and over again, and 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 luckily we like the result because I think the definition the definition of insanity is repeating the same thing over and over again and respect uh, expecting a different result. So at least we expect the same result every time. So you're not diagnosably insane, M musically speaking, no. So uh, the name of this album, when I first saw it, I thought of it as a sort of thing you'd say to somebody when you'd like broken their heart. And there was nothing you could do to fix it. But then I thought maybe there's a positive connotation. Like, you're so amazing in someone's estimation. There's an, almost nothing you can do to disabuse them of that notion. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it had several. Uh, I mean, it, it, I think I was thinking, uh, admittedly, more more negative than that. I mean, um, I, I did actually write the, the song in particular at somebody. Um, it was intended to hurt their feelings, and I hope it did. Um, but it, I think on a side in a side kind of way, it's like, you know, I found that uh, last year was it was a really kind of wild year for me, and in a lot of ways. And I found that I walked away from it with, um, I walked away with, from it with a reputation that kind of ended up like, like I I I, I obviously like uh, yeah I was bit, well, the way that people look at me changed over the last year really quick, and it was and it was a very uh, it was very obvious to the people around me before it was to me. This is because you were nominated for a bunch of awards and stuff, and your record. No, did really I think well? it's because I got arrested, and I, you know, you know, I had some, showed extremely erratic behavior throughout the year, <laughs> which is is something that I'm, you know, I'm I'm fully capable of. I mean, I'm. I decided that uh, I decided, you know, at one point last year that you know I was smarter than my doctors and took myself off one of my medications, and didn't tell anybody for about two months. And, and, and the police were the out. first to figure it out? No, no, no luckily that, that was, that was, it was handled within. <laughs> like it was informally handled? Law yeah. enforcement didn't have to get involved? No, no law enforcement. I heard you say that you have almost no memory of your kind of late teens, early 20s, and now what you're trying to do is kind of, as an adult, start to make some new memories. Well, I, I think that it's all, it's it's not that I don't remember it, uh, my my late teens and early twenties. It's that it's it's all just kind of a blur of of the same just crap over and over and over again. I was, you know, so it was a. I think I was left with a. I think that I I I, I recently just discovered that you know it's like I I can't outrun everything and I don't need to. <laughs> that uh, you know people that life is a, f a fairly forgiving game and and. Uh, and so I need to, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, yeah. You mentioned these guys who have dads who are famous musicians. And what kind of, uh, what's the sort of shadow that that casts? Well, I wonder, I wonder sometimes because, I mean, given who, who my father is, I, I, I didn't really, I didn't grow up with him around. So it wasn't like, it's, it wasn't like I had this looming figure that I looked up to that I thought I needed to add up to. He, he wasn't my measure of a man growing up. Yeah, so it was a little. It's a little different for me, but I can I could see like somebody who grew up w with their father being a famous, so, and even more like because my father also is 
relatively obscure. You know, he's not a household name by any means. But somebody like Waylon Jennings is, you know, and that's like, what's what? What is that? What is that like? You know, I mean, uh, it's got to be, it's got to be a, a strange, strange feeling. Yeah. So you were kind of in a way writing it on behalf of your friends whose dads are more famous. Well, and me. I mean, everybody, all of us. It was just like that common feeling of just, um, it was just, it, it was just like a weird, relatable thing that I kind of. Sometimes I come up with lines and that's the only thing I have to check is is can I can can I relate this to anybody other than me and that kind of that, that tends to be my deciding factor on whether it should make it into a song or whether it should uh become a you know an edit Uh you were in an episode of Treme with your dad Yeah uh how was that and was that something that like acting being in things is that something that's interesting to you at all? Not, not really at the moment. I mean, I, I, I think that uh, I find that uh, film people are crazy. Um, more crazy than music people. Yeah, they are. I think that they're, they're, they tend to have more of a. Uh, they have a, like everything happens on schedules. They're used to like very long working days. Everything going very fast. And having a little assistance to yell at. I mean, it's like I, I could not believe how many takes it took to get uh, some of the stuff that we did, <laughs> did on Treme. I was just like, you have to be kidding me. You know, because it was, it was actually, I, it was one of the few nights where you're in New Orleans and it's cold. You know? And it's, it's like just I, when I have to shoot a street scene. Right. Yeah. Um, how, if you don't mind me asking, do you know the story? How did your dad end up on The Wire? That's the weirdest casting I've ever, um, ever what, even conceived uh, of. Uh, I'm drawing a blank, but uh, with the creator of... David the, Simon. David Simon, yeah, is a... If you look in The Wire, if you, if you pay attention to the dialogue in some of the episodes, he, he, he's a, lar- a very big fan of my father's, and he has actually taken my father's lines and inserted them as dialogue and some of the show um and, you know so that's that's kind of been going on for a while and and he i don't know he's he's just a he's a really big music fan i think that's why he made treme next because I, I mean i've even heard him say it it's an excuse for him to hang out with all his favorite musicians because it's all that i mean if you watch treme every episode there's somebody there's some big musician or little musician it doesn't matter but there's somebody Famous or obscure on every episode that that's in a band or something like that somewhere. Did you always uh, just assume you were going to be a musician? Because I read that you you started playing in bands. Well, you I guess you tell me. I was. I mean, I was always interested in music. Um, it was not my intention to be a musician. I mean, I was as gr- growing up as a as a you know a young as a man, a boy raised by a very struggling single mother, I did not grow up with a whole lot of respect for my musician father. And being at Nashville, Tennessee, there were a lot of kids like me. So there were a lot of us. I mean, there are girls, native, like most native girls to Nashville, they're native, they hate guys in bands because they're, they hate their fathers. It's really it's it's a strange like social makeup that Nashville has because of that. So it's so it w- were you kind of thinking anything but music? I, well, I mean, I was I was a I was a I, lo- I loved playing uh, playing soccer. That was my you know I always played I played on I played travel competition soccer when I was uh, and played uh, played under eighteen when I was like ten ten and eleven and was uh, being. Um, you know, I was being, I was already having scouts come out looking at me for colleges and things like that. And so that was kind of the idea until I, I had about, you know, 12 and I, my doctor told me that at the end of the season, if I, I'd probably need to have knee surgery. And I was just, just, it was kind of like, well, <laughs> it, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense anymore. And so, uh, I started leaning on the guitar and, and, uh, I'm doing more drugs, and, <laughs> and there it went. <laughs> That'll torpedo a soccer career faster than anything. Oh man, I, and I, I played. My, I was a halfback too, so it was like I ran. I was, I was, I had to run a lot. So yeah. no, there's no way. And uh, but yeah, no, I, I think around 
12 is when I started. That's when I started the band thing started. I had a couple of punk bands with a co- with one of my cousins and uh and uh and I think around 13 I discovered I mean uh, well it was right before I was probably still 12 I discovered uh Woody Guthrie. Well, I discovered Lead Belly first because it was through Nirvana, the Nirvana Unplugged record. Because uh, Kurt does uh, Where Did You Sleep Last Night or In the Pines or whatever anybody wants to call it or My Girl. It uh, he he did that and 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 I knew it wasn't it wasn't a Nirvana song that I'd ever heard. So of course I investigated it and figured out that it was this guy named Lead Belly and I I listened to it and it was just like. For a, it took me a minute to realize that let's like, like I was just like wow I've just like wasted every like moment like <laughs> listening to music with because I've just been missing this stuff and and it all kind of came it came really fast I mean I was I quit playing soccer I dropped out of school and um and I just I spent like the next like two years just like playing around Nashville every gig that I could get and playing on the streets downtown and and uh just listening to all the music that I could just like then I you know through with the Lead Belly thing Woody Guthrie and Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee and and I became one of those old-time kids you know like the I listened to nothing but old-time music for a really long time and it took me it took me till I was in my you know late like late teens early 20s to realize that that uh you know the reason that i dig those replacements records is because you know a lot of it reminds me of carl perkins you know it's like it's because i I can hear the building blocks of all the stuff that i i love in in some of these new bands so do you have any guilty pleasures now like will we find any carly ray jepsen on your ipod is there there anything that's just saccharine sweet poppy kind of stuff that for whatever reason uh, catches your interest? No, well, not not really, uh, not really these days. I mean, I have like the uh, George Michael's Faith record. I, I, I think that's a. I think especially. But, you know, it's funny you talk about the Carl's per- Carl Perkins. You listen to the guitar on Faith. Oh man, that's a very old timey. It kind is. Of riff. It, it is also for the 1980s. It, it's one of. The, I mean, the sounds that were captured on that record, the drum, the drum sounds, and the and and not to mention the like the acoustic guitar on that track, especially. It's. It has to be the the best recorded acoustic guitar in the 1980s, without question, because it's it just it sounds like a microphone on a guitar, no, you know, no chips and dip and crap for it to run through. Do they do that? Do they run it through chips and dip? People ever? do. They do. Yeah. It sounds like a terrible recording. It's, a, it's awful. Procedure. It is. It's awful. It's sticky. <laughs> 